everybody, I'm Casey from CaseyFriday.com and here is one final walkthrough of the electrical system in this house. I'm going to be closing everything up, so let's start over here. And it's really a mess. This is why I want to do one final walkthrough. You see that large wire right there, that black one. See if you can see just how big that is. Here's some 10 gauge right there, and this is 8 gauge. So it's just really thick. It was hard to get through the walls. In the other video you see me take this uh, through the wall right there. And that's this is where the, the uh, main lug is going to be. There's already a grounding bar at the property that the house will be parked. And that's just going to be about probably 20 feet away from where this plugs in. It might even be 15 or 10 feet. So I'm not worried about um, grounding protection. That's going to be taken care of. And it goes through, just look at all this mess of insulation in this room. It is crazy because I had to take all that insulation out to run the wires through the walls. You might be wondering, why did you even do the insulation first? Well, for things like this, I needed to put two sheets of insulation in and then run the wires through. And these wires are just so rigid that it was really important to run them through, uh, put the insulation in first, because it's just too hard to squeeze it back there. So you already know there's an outlet down there. There's a light up there. It's gonna be an LED light. And then we've got this outlet down here at the bottom and you see it gets sort of like a little highway system of wires here. So the yellow wire is the power coming from the main lug, which will be the breaker box installed in that corner I just showed you. The black wire is the wire that's gonna be bringing the power from the telephone pole into the house. And that's gonna go over two it's coming from the outside of the house all the way over to the main lug just straight run there and then the white wire is i believe 16 gauge speaker wire and the blue is cat 6e ethernet so this ethernet is capable of 10 gigabits per second and there's not any hardware that i know of that can take advantage of that right now but i wanted to future proof and this box if you see right here here's where my desk is going to go i just put this box in so i'm going to have an ethernet and an audio outlet right here on the desk. So if I take my laptop off the desk, then I can put the uh, iPod stereo that you see right there with the blue light on it. I can put that on this desk and then this Cat6 e ethernet runs down here. You can see there's the main power, there's the power from the main lug and there's the ethernet, the speaker wire and it runs all the way over to the middle of that storage area. And this is gonna be shelving and that sort of thing. This is probably gonna be hidden. I'm thinking of putting my network attached storage server right there and it'll just sort of sit on a shelf. It might be up a little bit, I'm not quite sure. There's gonna be an audio 3.5 millimeter, just a regular headphone size jack that you can plug in right there. And then I've already found a couple of programs that I can do Pandora from the command line. I can do sort of an internet radio thing and I'll probably write an iPhone app to control that. So this is gonna be the, the Cat 6E comes out right here. I'm also gonna snip that. I think I'm gonna need to buy some more. And then I'm gonna run, uh, there are gonna be three plugs right there. One will be the 3.5 millimeter jack. The next one will be an ethernet out to the computer. And then there's gonna be another ethernet in right there that's gonna come down here. It'll go out the bottom of the house, just like you see this orange wire going out the bottom of the house right there. There are gonna be three holes right there, and I've already spoken about this, but I'll tell you again. The mini split ductless system is gonna be up here, and I'm going to put PVC pipe in the middle of this wall area, because I don't wanna drill all the way through the wall. You can do it that way, but I figure I've got the walls open, I can do it clean. So I think I'm just gonna get a three inch PVC pipe diameter and install that in the wall, have a little 90 degree opening that comes at the top so I can push the tubes for the mini split system for the refrigerant. They'll go down and then I'm gonna cut a hole in that bottom plate there to push them through. And then I've got the AC outlet right there. So that's what that orange wire is. And then I'm also gonna have the ethernet coming out right there. So there will be an ethernet jack on the outside of the house to bring ethernet in because the structure that is existing already at the property we purchased has internet. Uh, it has uh, fiber internet up to 80 megabits down and 20 megabits up, which is something like 224 bucks a month. And there's no way I'm gonna pay that, but they do have internet and I want to be able to run it in the house. So there's actually gonna be a coax coming in here and ethernet. So I might even end up doing another box right next to this, or I might just take that out with a double box. So the coax coming in is gonna to go to my network attached storage server right there running Linux. It's actually gonna go into an HD home run and that will be piped in through ethernet to that box. And that's gonna be kind of nice because it will be able to transcode TV shows. So we'll set up an antenna probably in the, the back corner outside of the house. Oops, there goes some insulation. 
So the back corner outside of the house will set up a small antenna. I found one on Amazon for about 30 bucks. And then basically if there are any network TV shows we want to watch, that'll just do all the magic right there and it'll pull them from the air and it'll snip the commercials out and transcode them with a handbrake into nice file sizes, 1080p, 720p, whatever. And then we can watch them uh, on my laptop. Anyway, this is this might be a little bit confusing to non-geeks, but basically I just want to be able to have my network attached storage here. I make backups. I want to be able to put my iMovie library on that because I want to start doing a lot more video editing and I might even get Adobe uh, Premiere Pro and After Effects. So I want to be able to have that fast storage with Ethernet so I can access it on my laptop on my desk over there and uh, Ethernet will make that incredibly fast. So that's the plan, and then like I said, I have the coax coming in as well. So I guess just to talk through this, I'm gonna have Ethernet coming in to here, and there'll be an Ethernet out. So that Ethernet will come out, and it'll go into a router, a wireless router, and then there's gonna be an output that will go back into the, the next jack down, which will carry that over, and that'll basically be like sharing the router's connection with my laptop over there. If Jess puts her laptop on the desk and uses it, she can do that as well. That is the plan for now, and this is the wiring. Here's another look at the kitchen area, and this is what's gonna happen next. The plumbing is going in next. There's gonna be the water heater down there, so I'm gonna need a, well, I drew a little diagram. I'll save you some time and just show you that diagram, and it's a little bit confusing to understand what's going on, but the plumbing is gonna be relatively simple. It's just gonna be in this little back corner of the house. There's a sink right there, the tub and the shower will be right there, and then kitchen sink right here. And then the uh, propane is gonna be coming straight through the floor. I'm just gonna drill a hole all the way through the floor because I don't wanna mess with running propane lines in the wall to power the hot water heater. And then on this side where the camp stove is gonna be, I'm also gonna drill a hole in the floor and run the propane up and we'll just put sort of cabinets around that. So it'll cover up those holes. And here's the wire going through the bathroom wall. And then up here, got the USB outlets on each side, and those are already all wired up. So the only other thing I might need to do is run some, I want to run some headers for uh, cabinets, but you know in the bathroom we got so many headers here. I got the header over the window and then got these four studs right next to each other just because that's the way it worked out. Might not even need to run any uh, headers. I might do a header right here underneath the mini split system, but that's going to be decided next. And then I want to have a cabinet here, so the composting toilet's going to be right there. And then up here I'd like to have a cabinet to store the Wonder Wash and the mini spinner. But our situation is going to be that we're going to be living in a place that has a cabin existing already, so we might just store it in there. In any case, I'll have to put a header across this wall right there, and I'll have to make sure that I keep the power line out of the way, or maybe I'll put a little notch in the 2x4 before I slide it in so the, the power line can go behind it and put a nailing plate over it so we make sure not to nail into it. This is where the oven recirculating vent is going to go and this is where the utility vent in the bathroom is going to go. So the, the very, very next step is I have a much better idea since all the wires have been run, and that's pretty exciting to say, of the type of main lug that I need. So I'm gonna go get that and I'm gonna see if I can double check what sort of voltage is coming out. I really just want to know at our property, whether or not the voltage is one phase or two phase. And when I run the power over to the main lug here with that black wire, I wanna make sure that I have two power lines because when I run to the AC, I'm gonna to need to pull 220 for the AC, 220 volts. So I'll need two hot lines. I'll figure that out and see what I'm gonna do. Once I get the main lug in, that's the exact next step and I'm really excited that I can finally do that. And I'm actually gonna mount it to the corner stud right where the black is coming off of. It might be a little bit lower just to make sure I've got enough of that black cord. But it's gonna be mounted just right here on that so it'll be sort of on the edge. And once I finish the plumbing, oh my God, we can close in the walls and this house is gonna be so close to done. So it's gonna be main lug, put that in, install the PVC to run the mini split tubing and then do the plumbing and really the plumbing, you know, it's sort of scary, but the electrical was scary before. I, you know, I have a degree in electrical engineering, but I'm not an electrician and it's not the same thing for people who are confused. So I was sort of scared of, oh, what if I hook this up wrong? But I mean, 
it's black, white, and ground. It's, it's really easy, and you can use red for switches and turning lights on. So I'm a little bit scared of the plumbing, but the setup's gonna be dead simple. So once I buy the PEX and the connectors and put it together, it's probably gonna take me, you know, an afternoon or two to get it done. Hope you've enjoyed this walkthrough. If you have any questions, let me know in the YouTube comments or go to caseyfriday.com and leave me a comment. If you enjoy this video, go ahead and subscribe and you can get all the updates that I have along with my P90X updates. And just to let you know, this is day 19 of my P90X classic round and my goal is to finish P90X in 90 days and this tiny house in 90 days. So stick with me, we'll get it done and uh, hope you enjoy the ride. I'm Casey from CaseyFriday.com. Thanks for watching.